welcome to the most intense game of war. Squig Zing demands money. Yeah. Global Kool Aid. You were shutting down my dance. I've been looking forward to working with you. <laughs> Monster hunting. I'm the leader of the Squid Game. Countless people could be in danger. Light it up! Come on, you son of a. strong leg cross. Hello, I'm Luke Greedy, and I'm the director of the Monster on Glen Cross. All throughout my life, I've always been fascinated with films and how they work and how they're made. A film is just a story, and unlike books, you can actually see what's going on, which is what I love about that. And ever since I was young, I've always dreamed of making my own movie. When I got my first phone, I thought it was the best thing in the world. Um, it gave me that sense of independence, and it made me feel very grown up at a young age. I remember this one time when I went to my mom and I said, hey mom, I wanna make a movie. But at the time, I had no editing tool to edit my videos together. So whenever I would make a, like a show or anything on my phone, I would just record the video and then record the next video and then just play them together on my phone. But like I said, I didn't have an access to an editing tool at the time. So most of my projects back in the day were mostly one-shot takes. So my mom, the person who's very awesome and I love so much, she told me about this app called iMovie, which is an editing app where you can edit movies and stuff like that. So she showed me the app on her phone and I was so excited to hear that there was an app out there that was free, by the way, free for me to use so I can follow my dreams. So basically, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for my mom. So thank you once again, mom, you're awesome. So she basically showed me the basics of the app, like how to add videos, cut videos, stuff like that. But as I used the app more, I started discovering new things. And then I would go to my mom and say, hey, look at this, this is cool. You can do this on this app. And then she's like, oh, wow, I, I never even knew that. So in some ways, my mom was a mentor to me and eventually down the line, I became more of a mentor to her, which is something we really bond over, which I really love. So now that I have an editing tool, I can make my first film. So I remember I would go to my siblings for ideas on what to do now that I have this power to create something incredible. So I usually just go to my sister or my brothers and they are the most inspiring people that I've met in my life. But the person who has the most ideas out of all of my siblings is my brother Tim. He is a great person, he's very creative, and he thinks of very funny things and I am very grateful for him for all of his ideas. So I've had this editing app for a couple weeks now and I still haven't come up with any interesting ideas or anything like that. But it wasn't until the COVID shutdown in 2020 when uh, everyone was stuck in home when I had all this time to think of awesome stuff. So I believe in October of 2020, my brother Tim came to me with an idea of 
like, a story based around us, like, as a family, and that family would, you know, have conflict with each other. I mean, every family has conflict. So, then my brain thought of a cool idea of having siblings fighting each other, but with guns. This eventually became my first film project called Siblings at War, and it was a three minute video, I think, and uh, I was planning on making a trilogy of shorts. Like, the first one would be them building up to the fight, the second one would be them fighting, and then the third one would be them resolving the fight. Now, I remember we did make the first short, which was about three minutes, as I said, and I showed it to my family one time, and they were like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I can't wait for the second one. So naturally, in my head, I thought, oh yeah, I should make a second one, because they liked it so much. But over time, we didn't get to finish making the second Siblings at War short, because I think I lost interest in the project. But still, even though that I lost interest in this project, it doesn't mean that I want to stop doing this. So I started thinking bigger and longer. What did he say? So I started thinking longer runtime because this short was three minutes, but I wanted to make a full feature movie. So logically, I went to my siblings for ideas. But at the time, it was still October. So then I thought to myself, hmm, October, hmm, monster movie. So from the rest of October through December, we made the first Monster on Glen Cross movie. Now I know what you're thinking. Wait, I thought the movie that's on your channel was the first Monster on Glen Cross movie, but you, my friend, would be wrong. <laughs> you see, the Monster on Glen Cross was originally a 15 minute film that me and my siblings made. I attempted to write a script and I got costumes ready. I myself was gonna play the monster. Everything was going in, in my brain. Everything was great. And I believe on December 5th of 2020, we finished it and I showed it to my family at a party. But from the moment it started and finished, I felt so happy. Because my family was so supportive and they were so excited and I will remember that moment for the rest of my life. But I still wanted to go bigger than 15 minutes. Something that I know now that I didn't know back then was that on the iMovie app, you could download your video or your movie and convert it into one video. But at the time, I didn't know this existed. And because I wanted to do another movie and my phone storage was building up after all of those videos that I took to make this one film, I sadly, and I regret this every single day, I deleted the original Monster on Glen Cross movie. Only I and a few members of my family still remember the original. Now that my phone had a lot of free space, I began thinking of more ideas for movies. So I thought back to my first three minute short video, Siblings at War, and the idea of guns and our family. I originally thought of trying to make the second part to Siblings at War, but my genius brother, Tim, came in and said, hey, I have this cool idea. Toy Story with guns. And then my mind exploded. This was an awesome idea. And I thought that maybe it'll be like Toy Story, but it'll be with us and, and they have to fight us with guns and, and all this cool stuff will happen. 
What originally started as Toy Wars eventually developed into War for the Land of the Toys. Now I know what you're thinking, but, but hey, I thought that you made the monster on Glencross first, and then you made War for the Land of the Toys. But you're wrong, my dear friend. If you remember from a certain video that I posted on this channel, I said that I had a movie that was done that I could post on this channel after the Monster on Glencross. I'll play it right here. The Monster on Glencross, the film that I made and posted on this channel, was not my first film that I've made. Now, I've made four other films before the Monster on Glencross. So like I said in that one video, I already made this movie. So after we made the original Monster on Glencross, then I deleted it to save storage on my phone, we started making War for the Land of the Toys, which took from, I think, December of 2020 to February of 2021. Now, if you watch War for the Land of the Toys on my channel, at the beginning it says this film was originally filmed in two parts. That is true. The first part took from December of 2020 to February of 2021 to make, as I said before. And the second part took from May of 2021 to August of 2021. Now, I originally intended these movies to be one full movie. But back in February, I wanted to cut it down so that way I could show it to my my family on that day because we had a party on that day and I, I just wanted to show them this, this movie that I've been working on for months now. And when I showed them that, I was so happy. So then I realized I can make a trilogy out of this. The first part can be the first movie, the second part can be the third movie, and then I wanted to make one more after that to finish it off. Now, I'll save the making of War for the Land of the Toys for a completely different video, but after I finished making the last War for the Land of the Toys movie, which I haven't posted on this channel yet, so stay tuned uh, as, as I'm recording this right now, um, I had this brilliant idea of remaking The Monster on Glencross, my first film. So at the beginning of the last War from Land of the Toys movie, I put, like, a trailer out for the remake of The Monster on Glencross, and everyone was so excited, and I too was excited to start this journey. So from the end of September of 2021 to the beginning, I think, of November 2021, I had this month-long process of trying to figure out how I'm going to remake this movie. And after making these three other films, I had a lot of experience now and much more knowledge of everything and how movies are made. So during these months of thinking, I started making a new script. I originally wanted it to be like a sequel to the original and hopefully people would remember the original and it would be a continuation of the last movie. But as the months went by, I thought of just doing what any horror movie would do, just reboot the series. Now typically, I'm not really the kind of script maker guy. I I say I'm a writer, but I'm not really. I've tried to make scripts in the past, but I am just too impatient to even think about making scripts. So I'm just kind of like a go with the flow guy. And during these months of thinking, I thought up of many, many different possibilities of what this is going to be. It went from a reboot to a sequel, to a TV show, I think, and it was just a very confusing time for me. So like I said before, I'm a kind of a go with the flow kind of guy, like make it up as I go along, 
I told myself in my brain, hey, brain, think of one part of the movie and then think of the rest later. So I thought of the beginning for so long, I just had to get it right. But eventually I got the idea of the beginning of the monster on Glen Cross that you see in the film today. So at this time, this was, I believe the beginning of November. And I was like, okay, I got the beginning of the story down. I got all the actors here ready and I am going to get this done. So we started filming the first thing of the movie, the first scene of the movie, which was the card game or the most intense game of war as I so stupidly put it. And things were going good. We were filming for probably like 30 minutes to 45 minutes, I think. And I say it, I'd say it was a pretty good first day. So a thing that was challenging for me to do personally um, was that this film was different than the other films that I did, like the War for the Land of Toys movies. Um, in the War for the Land of Toys movies, we didn't need any costumes or anything because the toys were just there and they were all ready to go and we just used our hands to like kind of control them. But doing a live action film with probably like about eight or nine or ten actors, it's pretty challenging to convince the audience that this person is a different person from this person when really they're playing two characters at the same time. I think I play about like five characters. I could be wrong though, but everyone else played at least one other character in this film. And as the time went on, I had to think of clever ways to make other people look like a different person. Like, in the first scene, my brother Tim, who plays, I think, Bob Walker, who's the guy with blonde hair in the card scene, he also plays the Squid Gang member, and I had to put, like, a like a mask over him so he can cover his face, and, like, a hoodie so he can cover his hair, and it just became a very complicated process of trying to disguise another person. I remember during my few months of thinking about this film, I knew that I wanted to have blood. Because in the original film, we had blood, but it wasn't really blood-like. It was like pink slime, I think. So one time in October, I think, um, I think we went to Party City to get costumes, and I saw this as an opportunity to get fake blood for the film. So I asked my dad, hey, can I get fake blood? And he's like, sure, as long as you be careful, son. And I got fake blood. So now this could be somewhat real. So when we first used fake blood for a scene, uh, I believe the first scene we used fake blood in was the scene where Mark Smith, James's dad, me, dies to the Squid Gang member because he didn't have money. Uh, when we first opened the thing, I thought it would act like blood blood, but it kind of acted like water. So it would like drip down, it would dry quickly. And the time when the fake blood looked real was after like a couple seconds of you putting it on. So it had to be like applied very quickly and we got to get in position to film the scene and it was very difficult. So for the scene when Mark dies with the fake blood, uh, we originally filmed me choking and like falling on the ground first and it stained my white t-shirt. I had to wear a white t-shirt that day because I didn't want to stain any of my other clothes. 
So we filmed that first and it the blood got on my shirt and then I was like, oh shoot, how are we gonna film this now that I have blood on my shirt? So then I think, I don't remember if it was either me or Tim who suggested this idea, but I think it was me when I, I flipped my shirt around so that way the blood couldn't be seen. Uh, I believe you can see the blood on the back of the shirt when you watch the film for like, probably like one second, one or two seconds. So yeah, that was kind of a clever thing that I did. So for the original Monster on Glen Cross, uh, I believe my house was the only set. It was just one set, one house, that's it. But for this film, I wanted to have multiple sets. I wanted to be in the, the Mark's house. I wanted to be in the police station. And I wanted to be outside. I wanted to be in cars. I, I wanted it be, to feel real. So a thing that I didn't have in the past was a green screen, which is very helpful for making films today. So I believe it was around Christmas of 2021 and I asked for a green screen for Christmas and I got one. Actually two, two green screens, which is very helpful and it helps me create more stuff that I can't do in real life that I can just kind of sort of make it real. So I knew that for car scenes we actually weren't gonna drive a car because that would be too dangerous. So I wanted to do it the way that modern films do it. They film it behind either a green screen or a blue screen. And now that I have access to this technology, I can do it too. I like using green screens. They're pretty cool. And um, it it's very confusing, but not at the same time. It's like accessing a completely different world of how things are made. And it's really cool. My favorite scenes to make were the ones that I had to use a green screen with because it would make me think about how I was able to get this done, how I was able to make this. So I really like those kinds of scenes because they like challenge me to think of how I can get this done. And I definitely gotta say my least favorite scenes were the ones where I actually had to act in them. I should say that my least favorite scenes were the ones where I was the monster because it was just a complete mess every time when I needed to get into the costume because the, the mask kept falling off, the little bands for the mask that kept falling off and it the mask wasn't really that comfortable and I had all this stuff to get on and one time I lost some of my props for the costume and it was just a whole mess. But through the good times and the bad, this was a, an amazing experience and it's been a pretty amazing experience and I'm just glad I was able to complete this movie and show it to a lot of people. Pre-production lasted from September 29th of 2021 to November 20th of 2021. Production lasted from November 20th, 2021 to May 30th of 2022. And finally, post-production lasted from May 30th, 2022 to June 4th, 2022. This film took about 10 months to make. And no matter how difficult it took to make this, I enjoyed every second of it. So, like I said before, uh, for car scenes, we used green screens, and I'm pretty sure anyone in their right mind would know when a green screen is being used in this film, because it's not really that great. 
But as you can probably tell, this is just normal footage of a car driving down a street. And then here is where we use the green screen. And I am well aware that this footage does not look completely real, but I am just working with what I have right now. So let's compare this scene with the original footage. Oh, hey, Chief. It's me, James. Gonna come in a little late. Slept in a bit. Yeah. See you at the station. Hello? Oh, hey, Chief. It's me, James. Gonna come in a little late. Slept in a bit. Yeah. See you at the station. Now let's take a look at the scene of where Carl dies to the monster. So in this scene, Carl walks into a very dark room and he has a phone light and the lightning strikes that are in the background to light the scene. So to get the lightning strike effect that you see in this scene, we had to get a phone light and turn it on and off at certain points when the lightning strikes. So one of my favorite scenes in this entire movie is when Lily is running away from the monster and the monster is chasing after her. And it's not for the reason you think. It's because the original shot was so funny that I could not stop laughing after I saw it for the first time. Eliza, get out of the house! There's a monster! This is it. This is the house. This here, my friends, is the main set. This house is the house. This is the same house that I filmed Fly Hunter in. It's a sidewalk. And yeah, this is the main set. Over there's the bushes from where we could see Mark walking along the sidewalk. I'll show a side-by-side -side comparison here. They're in here, he was ducking behind. The, the Squid Gang member was ducking behind the bushes to avoid being seen by Mark, who was right there on that sidewalk. Over here, this is where the kids were walking up and seeing that the house was blocked by caution tape. I remember we had to set it up with some tape over here and it was snowing that time. So yeah, those are fun times. They walked up here and they went into the house there. And right here, we got the backyard set. As you can see, there is place set there and in the film you obviously do not see a place set there that is because we filmed away from the play set or the whatever this is called the playground thing so this is where the final battle with the monster was filmed this is one of the sets of the forest scenes and right here we got a log, which is where I believe uh, sketch artist guy and 
James were looking at the footprints that led into the forest that were right there. And they were looking at the footprints over there. So yeah, I'll give a side-by-side -side comparison right here. You got the house in the background there. And over here, I believe, is where the group started heading off into the woods to go find the monster. But right now, it has leaves all over the place. The, the trees have leaves on them. Uh, but at the time of filming that one shot, they were, uh, they didn't have leaves on the trees. All right, it looks like over here, we got the fireplace that the group had a fire around. See, like over there, that's where, uh, that's where Jack Johnson sat and, uh, the rest of the group sat here too. So yeah, this is a, it's one of the sets for the fire scene. I'll give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison over here. That's where Jack Johnson sat. Over here, we got Lily and the other girl, I forgot her name, but Officer Badge. Yep, that was her name. They sat right here. I'll give it a side-by-side. Over here is where Unknown and James Smith sat. James sat there, Unknown sat there. I'll give a side-by-side -side right there. Now for the close-up perspective, the first-person perspective, I should say, of the monster, we used some trees over here, I think. I think this one was one of them we use for that one shot. I'll give that side-by-side -side comparison. So we use this tree for the perspective of the monster. So yeah, we pretty much used a lot of a lot of spots in this uh, this forest back here for the outside scenes. <sighs> go down here over there you can see the stairs that James walked down when he was going in the forest I believe over here this is where um what's his name uh sketch artist guy yeah that's his name uh I should know I played him uh I believe this tree right here is where he died uh I'll give that side by side comparison here I mean, obviously the blood isn't on the tree right there. I remember I had to get my cousin Aiden to go out here and help me apply the blood and get the blood on the tree. That was fun. And I laid right there, I think. A cool thing that I wanted to do for the outside scene was include this river here, like this this riverbed here uh there's usually water in it but right now it, there's no water i wanted to include some sort of chase scene down the river or something that would be cool but obviously it didn't get into the final cut of the movie uh mostly due to time and uh me not doing it so yeah, there, there was a lot of ideas that were scrapped from the final cut of the film, which is very unfortunate. But then again, I am proud of what the final result came out to be. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. All right, Rogue Gangsters. I won't get into too much detail on the inside scenes because mostly because we filmed all of those scenes at three different locations and I don't want to overwhelm you with all this like information and stuff so I think I'm just gonna end the video right here uh, if you guys like the video then uh, make sure to like comment and subscribe I guess 
And uh, if you guys have any more questions about the monster on Glencross and how it was made or like any behind the scenes stuff, uh, make sure to comment down below. And uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Also, remember the sequel to the monster on Glencross, my spy movie that I made with my cousin Aiden called The Darkness Below Us is going to be posted on my channel on November 5th at 6 30 p.m eastern time so make sure to set your alarms for that date because that is the most important date of this month so stay tuned guys